tips and tricks for your spinal fusion coming from me. I've lived it. So stick around and let's discuss. Did you know that over 80% of Americans will suffer from back pain at some point during their lifetime? That's a lot of us. So let's get through it together. I'm Chris Lopez and this is Bionic Living. Hi. So this is again my second YouTube video. I'm trying to get some material out there so people who are going through or are going to go through uh, spinal fusion like I have, um, these videos can give you comfort, information, and help mainly uh, get you through your post-op course and into normal living um, successfully. So today is going to be a part one of three videos um, helping you uh, with tips, tricks, and um, little pearls that I, I learned um, after uh, spinal fusion. Mainly from the time frame of getting home from the hospital to that six week uh, follow-up all the way to the three month follow-up. So today's video will be mainly about preparing your home um, for after the surgery. Uh, the next video will be about preparing to ask for help. And the third and final video will be preparing your mind to get through probably is one of the most difficult uh, things you've ever been through or done in your lifetime. So when you come home from the hospital, you're not going to be allowed to BLT bacon, lettuce, and tomato, or bend, lift, and twist. And I know if any of my friends watch this, oh my God, I was crazy about it. If I even twisted a little bit, I always was like, oh my God, what did I do? Did I ruin the surgery? Did I break the fusion site? Um, so I was very strict with the BLT protocol that the physical therapists, the doctors um, explained to me for the post-op course when I was at home to protect the work that they did in my lower spine. So that is gonna be the goal of getting these tips and tricks um, for getting the home prepared to prevent any bending, to prevent any lifting, or to prevent um, any um, twisting, which for me was the hard one. I would twist a lot, especially in my chair. Um, so let's get into it. So the place we'll start, first of all, is the bathroom. How to prepare your bathroom for you to stay safe and be comfortable during your recovery period. Most likely you'll be able to shower. Um, I think I was, it seems like a uh, lifetime ago. Um, and you just have to, you know, watch your incisions, but just let the water run over. So for me, I had a stand up shower, which was great with a bench. Um, I made sure that all the things I needed to access in the shower um, were high, so I didn't have to bend over and get something off the ground. So um, I didn't shower every day. I showered every other day. Um, but how did I reach my feet? Um, so one thing that I do recommend getting um, for your shower is something like this. Now, I did not use this one. I used one that had more of the traditional plastic mesh sponge on the end, and it was plastic, um, but that I've thrown away. I used the heck out of it. It was so beneficial uh, for me to get down to my feet and my legs, but uh, this is a little harsh. This is more for your back, but something in this form would be great um, when you're showering, showering to get down to your feet. Um, so I have a list here of things I need to cover, so bear with me. Um, yes, so the second thing I got, even though I was told by others I probably wouldn't need, but I'm so glad I did, was a toilet riser. I got a cheap one from Amazon. Um, it just was a uh, plastic toilet seat that was just higher. You set it in over your toilet and it just didn't, uh, well, it just allowed you to not have to get so low. Um, to your toilet. I'm 6'2", so this toilet riser made it nice and easy for me to use the bathroom in a comfortable way 
um, and I never felt like I was putting my body in any angles or any stress that could be damaging my lumbar fusion site. So we got this, we got the toilet riser. Um, the um, third thing that was really beneficial was having these by my sink. Um, these are just little Sonicare glasses because one broke and I got a new one. But these are great because um, I would use one since I can't bend over and put my face into the sink to get the water. Um, I would have to bring the water up to me. So one was for rinsing, one was for spitting. I don't know if you need to, but just be aware that you need to have um, cups like this close to you so you can, you know, brush your teeth and remain rectus, okay? These are great. Um, another thing for women, because you can't bend down at the end of the day and wash your face in the sink, I know um, I've watched other uh, YouTubers recommend things and uh, the one that was really beneficial to me was Emily D. Baker. I'll put a link to her um, Spinal Fusion tips and tricks video in my uh, description below. Um, she also does a really good job and was really good for me um, getting ready for my Spinal Fusion. Uh, so back to the point of what you would need is uh, makeup remover some type of wipe for your face. Uh, men too, I guess. I just didn't wash my face that much. Again, I wasn't show showering every day. So um, the makeup remover was very beneficial. So that covers the bathroom. Um, if there's anything else I missed, I didn't get a shower chair. I was able to stand in the bathroom, but let me know in the comments if there's anything else you have questions about in regards to using the bathroom, um, showering, um, personal hygiene, after a spinal fusion. So the second part of the house you have to get prepared for will be your bedroom, okay? I have a nice firm mattress. It's up a little bit higher. If you have more of a platform bed or one of those soft mattresses, if you can, I recommend investing in a bed that would be higher up or somehow lifting your bed up and getting a firmer mattress to be able to support your spine um, and allow you to um, be able to get in and out of bed fairly easy. So one of the techniques that you will learn before you go home uh, from the hospital is called barrel rolling. Um, and it's a technique that allows you to get in and out of the bed where you're not really bending with your twisting your body. Um, so having a nice firm, expensive mattress is good and probably good for you from here on out along with getting that platform bed or any type of bed that's low to the ground lifted. That's imperative. What else? Oh, um, the barrel roll. Maybe I'll put up a little link of me barrel rolling so you're prepared for that. But the occupational therapists, the physical therapists, they will all um, show you how to do this. Um, so that's the bedroom. Um, the other thing about the bedroom too is you gotta consider like your clothes and your um, linens, anything that's gonna be in a lower shelf or in a lower, lower drawer. And this will hold true for the kitchen too. I was able to take things and put it into either big closet. So I took all of my stuff that I, I used from lower drawers that I knew I would be wearing, loose fitting, comfortable clothes, um, towels, sheets. Um, I put them up high into a shelf that was you know, directly in front of me. So I never had a bend to get anything out of them. So that's another recommendation. All the low hanging fruits in the house that you're gonna wanna pick, bring them up to your chest level so you can access things easily, okay? Um, now we're heading into the living room where I'm at now. So right behind my camera, um, there used to be um, the couch perpendicular to here, but I moved, moved it out of the way and uh, made the space nice and open so there wasn't anything I had to step over, step around. And I ended up purchasing um, a power recliner. It was from the room place. I went to the Value City, different stores, and I found one from the room place. And to be honest, I love the room place. It was a good deal. Um, they delivered it on time the day before my surgery. Um, everyone was really great at that store. Um, and the chair was perfect. And it was one of those chairs that lifted me up, <laughs> like you see in those commercials, and allowed me to stand without really having to push myself out and up out of the chair. And of course it laid back and lifted my feet um, in a reclining position. 
So that was really great. And I've used that more and more over the weeks after my recovery. To be honest, I did lay flat a lot in my bed um, because just you're tired, your legs are burning. There's a lot of pain. So back to the living room. You just want to get everything out of the way. I got a recliner. I recommend you do invest in a recliner. I sold it on OfferUp once I wasn't really using it anymore. And eventually I'll get my living room back to where it was. Um, I got a TV table, a nice uh, plastic TV table from Amazon. I think it was $40. Um, I'm still using it. Um, I probably will continue to, to use it until I'm forced into more of a uh, traditional living space. Um, but it was great to use with that recliner and get one that is a recliner with, so you can pull it over the recliner and close to you so you're not leaning forward to eat anything or do anything. Um, what else? Subscriptions. I uh, subscribe to everything. I subscribe to Netflix, to Hulu, uh, to YouTube TV, to HBO Max, to Disney Plus. Um, I loaded up my uh, subscriptions so I was prepared to fill my time and get my mind off of recovery and pain. Um, and you know, I spoiled myself, and I think you should too. It was worth it. And um, oh, as I got better, you know, I ended let some subscriptions lapse, um, and I'm still doing so. I still have YouTube TV, and I probably will end it uh, fairly soon here and get my budget back under control for those subscriptions. What else? Oh, earbuds. Um, I don't have mine in right now. Hopefully, this video is taking my audio. We'll see. Um, so earbuds were good because I had people helping me that were working. Um, so I could put those in and watch things on my phone, listen to music, listen to podcasts, listen to the TV. Um, in the hospital, I really didn't do much of that. But at home, earbuds um, or some type of you know headphone are gonna be very beneficial. Um, also something to hold your phone. Um, I saw things on Groupon that you could put around your neck and put the phone there. I wish I got that. I had some, some like a little stand that I could put on the TV table to keep my phone uh, set up for me and accessible. The phone was crucial throughout my recovery. Um, oh, since you can't really bend over and you can only put on your shoes in a special way, it was really frustrating. I have really bad hips, so putting my foot up and getting it up to my hips, sitting down in a figure four fashion it was somewhat difficult and I really didn't want to you know, be worrying too much about tying shoes in the first few weeks of my recovery. So I bought, I'll show you here, um, good old fashioned Birkenstocks um, because I didn't want to be barefoot in the home a lot. I still wanted support. I got the court kind, okay? The court kind are imperative because they're going to be um, stable. Um, they're going to give you great arch support and um, they're going to have the rigidity that you need to really give your um, body the support that it will need during this time. So I got these so I could wear them in the house. I would go outside and walk in them a little bit too um, as I started my walking program. Um, so these were huge. I still wear them. There's dog hair all over them. So it's from Tucker. Um, these were great. And uh, these are great anyways so you're not barefoot in your house um, during your work from home period during this pandemic as well. So I recommend these. All right, so we got the bathroom, we got the bedroom, we got the living room. I'm gonna put my shoe back on. Um, last place is the kitchen. Um, so the first few weeks, um, I didn't have my dog, but when the dog came back and I had my weight restrictions, I bought these plastic cereal containers. I'm going to actually grab those now and show you what they look like to divvy up the dog food into small 10 pound um, sections. Uh, once I was allowed to lift 10 pounds, I used those to feed him one more. So I'm back and I put my earbud in. I don't know if that changes the audio or not. Um, but anyway, so I got these um, off Amazon again, these little containers to divvy up the dog food from, food from my bigger bin or from big bags since you can't lift more than 10 to 15 pounds. Usually that's at about, about your six week point you can start doing things like that. Before your six week point, you can't lift anything heavier than like a gallon of almond milk. But uh, got a whole bunch of these, about four or five containers and would have friends or family or anyone who would stop by if they were empty, fill them up with the dog food so I could um, get to them easier and uh, feed him. He's staring at me right now. 
ready for a walk. Um, so that's the kitchen uh, with the dog food. Um, again, uh, cabinets, all the low cabinets, anything um, that you want, you know, put it up high. Um, for example, my spices are low um, before I was left on my own from, you know, six weeks to my three month part. Um, my friends and family helped lift spices and left out um, pots and pans on top of the, the um, stove or uh, all the plates are already high, but everything needs to be high in the higher cabinets. Um, I wouldn't fill the dishwasher and when I started to, I only filled the top rack. Um, anything to prevent my BLT. Um, so I think that's mainly it in the kitchen. Um, and again, keeping any type of rugs that could be slippery or that you could trip over. Um, you want to keep everything clear and uh, out of the way. So I think that covers mainly everything you need to get done for your house. Um, a couple other little things are that helped me. So a friend bought me that tiny little Tetris game, uh, Micro Arcade. I don't have a Nintendo, um, I don't even know what they're called, player. So a friend of mine got me this. And I was like, I'm never gonna use this. This is ridiculous. And I played it for hours every day. I loved it. Um, so that was fun. This will probably be like how to prepare your mind video coming up. But um, I just found this when I was looking for uh, other things. And then also, um, just so you're aware, um, if you've had surgery um, or if you're going to have surgery, um, you, hopefully your surgeon will give you a brace. Um, what I liked about this brace is it just reminded me not to do anything I shouldn't do bend, lift, or twist. I wore it all the time for the first six weeks. Um, then after that, I would take it off for a period inside the house. Um, and I even wore it to work after the three month period. Um, it was great. Um, so I'll put it on and show you what it looks like. It has dog hair all over it too. Um, so it has this hard front, this hard back, and someone comes to your house before your surgery from the company, whatever the surgeon uses, and makes sure they fit you appropriately and show you how to use it. So. It goes like this once and that kind of has like this, you know, cinch uh, pulley system, almost like a corset. Oh, there you go. And you can pull it even tighter and it helps keep you straighter. So, oh God, it's been a while since I wore this. It's tight, but uh, there you have it. So I, this was my best friend throughout the uh, entire recovery process. And uh, I don't know if your surgeon is get, getting you this, mine did. So I liked it. And last but not least, my other best friend, I guess I had two, was something I had from previous surgeries, um, was this grabber. Oh my God, this was the best because you drop so many things and don't even realize it until you can't bend over and pick them up. So <laughs> if I was left alone or by the time I was alone in my house, this was great um, because again, it's gonna grab things for you from the floor. I use this to open up like the washer when I was starting to try and wash my own clothes. Um, I did a lot of things with this. Um, I haven't used it in a long time. It was starting to get a little loose because I used it so much, but I had this. And I think this is something that you can get from your occupational therapist before you're discharged um, online, a medical supply store. Um, it was really, really, really helpful. No m matter what, what type of spine surgery you're having, I recommend to get this because um, it was crucial to my post-op course. So that covers tips and tricks after spinal fusion, preparing your home. Um, before I leave you for today, um, I'll let you know how I'm feeling. Um, it's April, 2021. It is midweek. Um, I just finished. Uh, my remote uh, work day. I have one day um, at home, thank God. Um, it really helps me um, rest if I need to lay down um, in between um, work. Um, other days I am in a facility working on my feet. Um, so um, I feel pretty good right now. I, I've taken out the dog uh, a co couple times already today. Um, but I will tell you, when I got up this morning, my toes were tingly, I had burning in my right buttocks, it's always this right leg for me, and some lower back pain. So, I still have pain. I'm not taking pain medication today, I didn't take anything. So that's good. And I, um, I'm never regretting having the surgery. 
Now, I'm not trying to tell you you need surgery, um, but I'm saying for me and what my doctors recommended, it worked for me. And if you're scheduled to have surgery or if you're recovering from surgery, it's gonna get better. It's gonna be worth it. Um, there's light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not a perfect world. Um, I'm over six months out. My surgery was originally September 24th, 2021. Um, and uh, right now, in this moment, I feel pretty good. So hopefully that inspires you to continue on your path and your journey. Um, yeah, so just a quick disclaimer. These videos that I will be making, helping you with my tips and tricks, this is not medical advice. This is anecdotal information that I'm giving from my personal experience. Let your doctors be your uh, medical advisors, but let me um, be your guide as a friend, as someone who's been through the journey. Um, and uh, let me be someone that you can go through the journey with, because this is, this is not over. Um, we have the rest of our lives to live. And uh, I hope that this brings you success, this brings you comfort, and this brings you hope uh, in whatever stage you are at in your um, um, bionic um, living. And uh, whether you're having a back surgery or any other type of surgery in your body, um, hopefully these videos I'm making will uh, help you and also commiserate with you and create you know, uh, a connection, a bond, and, and a family that we can uh, discuss our issues with that man, many other people who haven't had major surgery can understand. So I will leave you with that. Don't forget to get this if you're having your back surgery. And um, I'll be updating you more with uh, two more videos. So stay tuned and uh, stay well. Bye.